This is going to be a little demonstration on how a master draftsman like Rembrandt uses just basic shapes uh, to start out drawings like this portrait right here. He uses the basic spheres, cylinders, boxes in order to build a composition like this one and we're going to take a look how he did it so you can draw along step by step. The first thing that you'll see is the face is just a big oval shape. He makes it really, really simple, um, an outline of an oval. You can see that the light source is coming from the upper left by that shadow on the side of the nose. And then the shadow side of that oval is going to be right here, and all this is going to be in shadow. So it would be just how you'd expect a regular sphere or oval to be shaded. Uh, then he has a really big shape for the hat, another oval on top of that that you can see here. So we've got one oval on top of another oval. Uh, and all that is going to be in shade because of the light source coming from the upper left. Um, sitting on that is a, uh, the oval sits on a cylinder. That's the cylinder of the neck. And because the light's coming from the left, the left side is in the light and the right side is in shade. And then the other big shape is the coat, which wraps around the head and the neck. And so you get a little dark where the um, cylinder comes into the coat and then another dark on top where the collar wraps around. And those are the big shapes right there. Uh, oval cylinder, another oval, and then this wrapping um, drapery. So now we're going to close that image out and start our drawing. So I'm going to draw this the same size as my reference, uh, so I don't have to really worry that much about proportions. So I'm just going to make a mark at the same level as the bottom of the chin, and another mark uh, at the top of my oval, and then just draw that oval shape in that's the face and you can see that really clearly in his final image so we're just gonna make that oval and then we're gonna put some indications in for the features you can see that the eyes are on a little slant so we're gonna put the, uh, the direction of that slant and uh, where they are where the bottom of the nose is and just another indication of where the middle of the mouth is uh, and then I'm going to put a little direction line for the tilt of that oval. Next I'm going to indicate where the shadow side of that oval is with a little line. We'll draw the cylinder of the neck first, so two little lines down, and we'll show the light side and the dark side. Light side on the left, shadow side on the right, and then we'll draw the big shape of the hat, that other big oval. On top of this, we're going to draw the big oval of the hat and hair. So we'll just make that big shape, and because the light is coming from the upper left, that's all going to be in shadow. So we'll indicate that with some... Uh, hatching marks. So that's our third big shape. Our fourth big shape is going to be the wraparound of the coat. So that's going to start about where his bottom of the nose is and come around and wrap around from the back of the head to the front of the head and then go down. And so where it wraps around that's going to be dark. And then we'll indicate the back of the jacket. And then it wraps around from the back to the front of the neck. And so since the neck goes into that, that's going to be dark as well. Uh, here's a little indication of where the ear is. And those are our basic four shapes. And once you get that set up and looking correctly, all of the hardest work is done. 
So now that I've got all my proportions set up, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And then we just need to draw smaller shapes on top of these big shapes. So let's uh, indicate where the eyes are first and where the nose is. So I'm just going to draw the shadow side of the nose and come down. And I see a little bit of the bottom plane of the nose. So I'm just going to indicate that with a, a wedge shape just for now, just to place where the nose is. Let's draw the middle of the in between the lips. You can see where the open mouth is. It's kind of an M shape. And we'll put a little indication of where the bottom of the lip is and another little indication of where the top of the upper lip is. Let's put in some eyes. You can see uh, it's a little slanted where his uh, eye sockets are because he's got that expression. So we can indicate that with some slanted straights. And then we'll just place the uh, upper eyelid and the eyeball. We still want to be able to move stuff around in case stuff uh, looks out of place. So I'm just kind of loosely putting stuff in and then I can change the size and shape if I want or I can even move it to the right or left and I haven't committed uh, to a lot of detail before I get everything looking correctly. I can see that I need to trim off a little bit on the side of his jaw there. And I can see that the bottom plane of his nose needs to have the same tilt as the eyes. So the eyes, the nose, and the mouth need to be all at that same angle or slant so they read correctly together. Uh, let's refine the nose a little bit and I can see that the tip of his nose is just a ball shape so I'm going to put a circle there and the wings of his nose or the nostrils are two ball shapes on either side and then I'm going to connect them and draw the bottom of the nose So now with those three ball shapes, I know exactly how they're going to be shaded because I know how a sphere is going to be shaded with the light source from the upper left. I see another ball on the chin. Uh, so I'm going to indicate that with a circle. And from the lower lips down to that ball, it goes back. So you see that in tone. And then you see a highlight on the top of that ball. And the other side of the ball is in shade. So I'm just going to indicate that really quickly. So I'm placing some of those, the next level of shapes on top of that big sphere of the head. Next, let's refine that big uh, oval. Well, let's take care of the ear. So instead of that little indication, I'm going to refine that shape a little bit more and then work on the shape of some of the hair that you see. He's got a big mass of hair that he indicates with a very simple shape. And then it's like a hair band or something on top that you can see is in light. And then I'm just going to put some indications for the direction of where the hair is going. It kind of just basically radiates out from the center. So we're just going to put some direction lines in. And 
And then let's refine the shape of that big oval of the hat. So we're going to break that big oval down into smaller shapes. So we're going to put a bunch of bumps and curves in there. So it's not just one big oval, but within that oval are lots of different curves. And that gives it a little more sophistication, a little better look, and you can design those shapes how you want them. But basically you're using that big oval as a guideline and then breaking that up into smaller shapes. The next thing we're going to do is uh, start shading some of the shadow areas. So I see some of the biggest shadows are on going to be on that shadow side. And also there's a big shadow from his nose down uh, to the corner of his mouth and on down. So starting from the corner of his mouth, we're going to indicate that in tone. And then there's another uh, large shadow on the side of his nose where the nose turns from light into shade. You can see a big cast shadow and I'm going to draw that shadow shape in where the nose is casting a shadow on the side of his face. I'm going to put some more shading on those three balls of the nose. Uh, put some eyebrows in. Hasn't got any eyebrows yet. So we'll just put some lines to show where those go. And show a little bit more about where that eye socket is. Now the lit side of his face some of that is in half tone, so I'm going to draw just some lines to indicate where that big half tone plane is. And I'm just going to shade that generally. So we have the lit side that's in full lighting, the shadow side, and then the half tone plane. That's probably a cast shadow from the hat. So I'm here I'm refining the neck a little bit, adding a little more darks in there, making that sit behind the wrap of his garment. Well, he's indicated he's very loose indications of the garment, just some squiggly lines you get in there. And then we've got to start putting some more shading in the hat. So I'm going to indicate some of the hair with some kind of curly wavy lines. I'm doing a combination of putting hatching just to drop the tone down and also um, trying to create that texture of the hair. So first comes the hatching and then comes the textural hair lines. <laughs> 